absolutely is a tool for, for creating dialogue and a very powerful one. When people come together, they share a space and they share time together. It's the equivalent of breaking bread. <laughs> What Skate Stand does is to combine skateboarding with education. Our biggest programme is called Skate and Create and that involves one hour in the skate park and one hour in the classroom. In the skate park gives them the opportunity to have fun and to learn new skills and to help one another and express themselves and all of those sorts of things that we associate with physical activity. And then in the classroom gives them chance to learn things that they're maybe not covering in their formal education. The whole curriculum is arts based so that it allows children, regardless of their ability, to join in. And I think that's really important for children in, in a place where the education system is very much based around rote learning, but also in conflict-affected areas where it can be really hard for children to imagine that things can be different. Um, we really try to help them express how that could look um, and that they can be the part of that change. I went to Afghanistan because my girlfriend at the time got a job in Kabul and I was also looking for a research type job myself. I had the skateboard with me because I was a skateboarder and I didn't find a job myself but I started to do these little skateboard sessions and what was really interesting to me was that girls would also try to skateboard and because skateboarding was so new it had a big advantage because all of these sports activities or other activities were known of to, to Afghans and Afghan girls were told you can't play soccer because that's an activity for boys. You can't fly a kite, that's for boys only. The fact that some girls were like on a skateboard with me in the streets was just blowing my mind. So it was these fearless girls that started to skate and then I just tried to encourage it as much as possible. And because the girls had more time to practice than the boys, they got better, of course. And then I held little competitions between the girls and the boys. And of course, the girls beat the boys. And that was really fun to see girls in Afghanistan doing something that boys couldn't. It was a fun time of just sharing and exploring what was uh, what what was possible and all the time people are telling me you're absolutely crazy what are you doing on the streets of Kabul running these skateboarding sessions there definitely were times when I was extremely scared there's been like 1900 attacks in Kabul since I started in 2007 if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, there's not much you can do and you have to somehow cope with that situation. One thing that's really noticeable about that is that once you get into the grounds of the skate school, it feels like another world. Everything is very peaceful, everything is fun and like really cheerful and it makes you realise that what that's providing for children in Afghanistan. The reality is that our students and our staff live there and they go about their lives every day. You know, I've got a passport in my pocket. I can leave any time. They can't. It's a male-dominated sport. Um, it comes with a lot of fashion. It comes with certain types of music and maybe some kind of societal associations. In Afghanistan, it doesn't because all that they know is this is a, this is a thing that boys and girls do. I didn't want to show them any like skateboarding fashion or skateboarding music or skateboarding culture because skateboarding culture was very westernized. The board itself is, is fun. The cultural aspect of it was the thing that somebody was going to push back against. And I didn't want to give anybody the excuse to push back because it was providing fun for the kids. Why should the baggage of the Western culture stop the kids being able to skateboard. There is always an issue around um, girls participation. For us it's always been really really important that we have 50% girls. So in Afghanistan skateboarding is not male dominated, it's 50-50. Around the 
world, it's probably 94% male skateboarding. Uh, I've got no idea what, what the exact percentage is, but it's got to be somewhere somewhere up there. And now Mazar Sharif has the highest concentration of female skateboarders anywhere in the world. There's simply nowhere else that 700 girls come to the same spot and skate every week. But it happens in, in northern Afghanistan.